Well, the statistics wars are a war of ideas having to do with one of the deepest and oldest problems, really. Uh, how do humans learn about the world in the face of incomplete and variable data? It's also the engine behind our current day worries about irreplicable science and the crisis, the statistical crisis in science. And one of the central roles, one of the central issues in these wars is what's the role of probability? How does probability enter when you're trying to reason about these error-prone areas? Does probability enter in order to ensure that in the long run we won't make mistakes too often in interpreting data? Or does probability enter to try to capture our degrees of belief or support or confirmation in claim? Okay, so these have been crucial issues and the wars between competing tribes of frequentists and Bayesians have been so contentious that everyone pretty much wants to believe that we're long past them. The feeling is that we have such high-powered methods now that really practitioners can use any method that works. Moreover, we have reconciliations between the rival groups and ways to come to grips with things that used to uh, seem opposed. But the truth is that uh, there's little agreement uh, on which of the many reconciliations and unifications to use or how to interpret them. And it turns out we're not even clear about what it means for a method to work. So it isn't enough to say that we're all very eclectic and we use whatever works. And so the statistics wars are still very much uh, with us, and they especially come to the surface unannounced in today's statistical crisis of replication. So I set sail in this book with a very simple tool, and that is that if a claim is made, and yet there was no chance for a flaw in that claim to have been discerned, then it hasn't passed any kind of a stringent test. Okay, the claim may fit the data beautifully, but in fact, it was never at risk and it was never really tested. And so this is the minimal requirement for severe tests. And I think we can all agree on this much. In this severe testing view, probability arises in order to capture and assess how well probed claims are and how poorly probed claims are. And so this is different from using probability either to control long-run performance, the performance view, or to capture degrees of belief or confirmation, what I call the probabilist view. Controlling long-run error is at least a necessary condition, but it's not sufficient for severity. So that's what it means to say that we will view statistical inference as severe testing. It means we recognize the role of probability in assessing and controlling how well probed claims are. And at current, there isn't a statistical account that reflects this philosophy. When we talk about the probability that a method would interpret data incorrectly, we're talking about that method's error probabilities. And so accounts that make use of and control error probabilities I call error statistical. That's where that comes in. The way to move forward is to get beyond the statistics wars. And to do that, we have to first of all, really understand them because at present what we have are competing experts often talking right past each other about what we really want and about what reforms we ought to adopt in order to restore scientific credibility in the face of various high profile failures of replication. Okay, and the thing about viewing statistical inference as severe testing, 
as I argue, is that even if you don't accept that view, you can use it as a tool for understanding the statistics wars. Okay, so that's the crucial thing. And it's very important that uh, the reader uh, recognize that it's going to be used as a kind of meta-level tool, a tool for excavation, I say, and for getting us beyond some of the jungle uh, and mishmash that now is making it very difficult for some people to understand a crucial part of science, namely statistics. Take the researcher who uh, p-hacks his data, a very uh, familiar word these days. You data dredge, you search and search. You might multiple test. If one claim uh, doesn't seem to come out, maybe you were looking for an improvement on a certain drug. If it didn't work uh, with heart, maybe it's going to improve with diabetes or longevity and you keep dredging. And we can show that the probability is high that you will eventually find something even if they are all spurious. Okay. In short, your error probabilities have gone by the wayside. You might report that this is very improbable to have occurred by mere chance variability when in fact it's very common to have occurred by mere chance variability alone. The American Statistical Association considered such data dredging and spurious effects sufficiently concerning to bring together a group of leading statisticians to try to put out a list of principles that should be followed at least in using statistical significance tests. But the weird thing is one of the principles which says that your p-values, your significance levels, will be invalid if you go around data dredging and uh, trying and trying again until you find something, is a principle that is not obviously held by rival groups, for example, by Bayesians. And the central difference is the one that I began with. Do we care about performance or do we care about degrees of belief or support. What might not matter for the latter does matter a lot for the performance. Now, very often people would poo-poo the concern with performance, saying, who cares about what happens in the long run? We're interested in interpreting the data in front of us. One of the, one of the crucial things that the philosophy I put forward, the severe testing philosophy provides, is the link between error probabilities and evaluating well-testedness in the case at hand. Because if you just ask yourself, what bothers you about that p-hacker, about the data dredger who keeps going until he finally finds something that his, his this drug, you know, can impressively show. What bothers you is not that if he continues to do this, then he will be wrong very often in the long run, even though that's true. What bothers you is that he's not done a good job in the case at hand at ruling out known errors that can result from spurious effects. And so this really solves a crucial problem that has long been an issue for frequentists, namely to say why they care about long-run errors in the case at hand. Um, the main thing that I want people to take away is the recognition that in order to get beyond the statistics wars or even understand them requires a certain amount of critical capacity, which might seem rather unusual in most professional settings. I say in the book that it requires chutzpah, uh, the Yiddish you know, word for guts, uh, because we're used to supposing that high priests in fields whether they tell us something about the formal statistics or about the history of the main f statistical figures, uh, it's, it's presumed to be correct. But the main thing that I want the reader to see is that they will have to have a lot of chutzpah and be prepared to challenge these views. 
the crucial thing that I want readers to take away is they have to challenge what the experts say, but also in so doing, try to go with them as far as possible and not just say, well, you're using your view, from your view, I'm wrong, and you know, and uh, from my view, you're wrong, but actually to use the severity principle, a minimal principle that I think we can all agree to, and it is only when their standpoint leads us to a situation where we're claiming to have evidence of something even though nothing has been done to rule out flaws. In other words, it's only when we've come to the point that we're violating the minimum requirement of evidence that we have to say, you know what, we must, we're after two very different things. There are competing goals in science. It's silly to say there's just one thing. Sometimes we are interested in just finding a way to support our views, the probabilist approach, and other times we're probing for errors. But by doing it that way, I think that we take a very contentious debate and allow people to understand and get past them.